Hi everybody, it's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching today's video. Today's video is called How to Take Care of a Dog. Now this video is going to be geared more for helping first-time dog owners. I am going to cover several things in today's video. I actually made a list of what we're going to cover in today's video, so it might be a little bit on the long side, but I think you're going to find that it's worth it to stick it out for the whole thing. We're going to cover health, feeding, exercise, grooming, training, supplies. We're also going to cover safety and comfort for your dog. I'm also going to have several free tutorials for you about caring for your dog. And then I'm also going to have a ton of extra resources for you. So again, go ahead and get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or something to drink and sit in with me for a little while. And if you're a new dog owner, I think that you are really going to be happy that you found this video. If you are happy, if it is helpful to you, please go ahead and give it a like. It does really help YouTubers when you do that. Now, if you have not been here before, my name is Deborah. I own this, web, whoops, this website, peoplelovinganimals.com. And several times a month, I do videos all about the care and health and training of dogs and cats. So if you have a pet that you would like to receive continuous help with, please go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. And please go ahead and share the channel with your friends and family who have a dog or a cat because they might enjoy having this sort of information as well. We're going to use this article on my website called How to Take Care of a Dog. I'm going to link this uh, article for you in the description box of today's video and I'll link all of the resources that we're going to go over in today's video. So you can click into this article after words if you want to click on everything, but I will have everything linked in the description box for you. Now, I'm glad you're here because, you know, owning a dog is a big responsibility. As a dog owner, there are several aspects of your dog's life and care that you are responsible for and you need to be knowledgeable about. So, like I say, in today's video, we're going to talk about several of those things. And again, we're going to be focusing on having this benefit uh, a new dog owner, okay? So first of all, how to care how to care for a dog. I'm sorry, I can't speak today. First of all, let's talk about health, which is the most important thing. As soon as you get a dog or a puppy, you should establish them as a patient with a nearby veterinarian. Don't put it off because if you should have any sort of emergency with your dog, you want them to already be a patient at a local vet's office. You don't want to be shopping for a vet if you're having some kind of emergency. Okay, so as soon as you get them, get them uh, established. If you don't know where to take them, ask friends and family for recommendations. Find out where do they take their dog. Okay, you can kind of get some referrals. Now, puppies and adult dogs, they need to receive necessary vaccinations, especially puppies. And it's also important to have your dog spayed or neutered. Female dogs should be spayed and male dogs should be neutered by the time they're six months old. Now, I'm going to give you a couple resources here. If you need help paying for that, I'm going to give you a link to my article, Free Spay and Neuter Clinics. There's also a video about that on this YouTube channel. Also, you might consider getting an inexpensive pet health insurance policy for your dog to help cover their medical expenses, not only now, but throughout their life. And the younger the dog is, the cheaper those policies are. So if you can afford to, you might want to go ahead and get that policy started while your dog is young. If, if you don't know about pet health insurance or if you're not sure if you should have it, I'm going to give you a link uh, for the article on my website, Health Insurance for Pets, Everything You Need to Know. And again, that has a video on this YouTube channel. I also just suggest get a folder of some sort. Just go to your dollar store and get a little folder and keep it for all your dog's medical records for their whole life, okay? At some point, you may need to show proof, for example, that your dog has been neutered. You may have to show proof that your dog has had shots, like if you move into a new apartment or if you travel with your dog, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you keep your dog's records. And you're also going to want to just keep track of you know, treatments and things that, that your dog gets over the years, medications they take and so forth. So just establish them a folder with their name on it that you keep all their stuff in, okay? Now, as far as feeding, 
I'm gonna give you some basic guidelines here, but I do suggest that you ask your vet for advice about feeding because your vet is gonna be looking at your dog. They're gonna see uh, well, you know, what the current weight of the dog is. They're gonna know what the breed is. Uh, and they're gonna be able to give you the best advice on how to feed your dog. But generally, um, puppies should eat puppy food for their first year. Then after that, you can give them adult dog food. Always make sure that you provide fresh drinking water to your dog. You should wash their food in water bowls frequently. For me, for all my pets, I rinse out their their um, bowls and kind of, you know, rinse it with my hand every day. And then once a week, I make sure that their bowls are washed with soap and water, whether it's in the sink by hand or if it's in the dishwasher. That's what I do. But don't have that dirty, filthy bottle of water or um, bowl of water sitting there for your dog all week. You wouldn't want to drink that, right? And, you know, it can develop dust and bacteria and all kinds of stuff. So make sure their water bowl and their food bowls are clean. Now, as a general rule, puppies who are between 8 and 12 weeks old should have four meals a day. Uh, puppies who are three to six months old should have three meals a day. And puppies who are six months old to one year should have two meals a day. Once a dog is an adult, whether meaning they're a year old or older, one meal a day is sufficient. But you can split that up into two meals as you, uh, if you prefer. And, you know, kind of play it by ear as far as what your dog likes, you know, um, you know, your dog might enjoy having breakfast with you in the morning. You know, um, they might enjoy having their dish of dog food when the family is having dinner at night. Or they might just want to have a bowl of food at night and that's it. So just make sure that they're getting enough food. And you can always follow the guidelines on the package. If it's a bag of dry food or if, if it's canned food, you can follow the directions on the can or on the bag itself for how much per day given your dog's weight. Okay, so that's another way you can figure it out. I didn't write it in this article, but I do recommend that you give your dog a mix of dry and wet food. Um, they should have both, okay? Now, uh, let's see if there's anything else here before we go on. I'm going to give you a link to my article article called Feeding Your New Puppy Proper Puppy Nutrition. And I'm also going to give you a link to go ahead and get a printable list of foods that are uh, poisonous for dogs and cats. You might know a couple, but I bet you, you do not know all of the foods that are going to be dangerous for your dog. Now, that's not only stuff that you're not going to share with your dog, but you're going to make sure your dog's not getting in the garbage, they're not picking up things on the walk, that sort of thing. So please, if you're a new dog owner, even if you're not, go ahead and click that link. I'm going to ask for your email and then I will send you in your email a printable list of foods that are poisonous for dogs and cats, okay? Now, as far as treats, um, some commercial dog treats can actually be harmful for your dog, and they don't usually provide any nutritional benefits. Um, I suggest instead of store-bought treats, which cost a lot anyway, give your dog raw vegetables instead. I had a miniature dachshund who loved carrots, and she loved little broccoli florets. She liked a whole bunch of other stuff, too. Um, I also had a Boston Terrier who loved sliced tomatoes. He also liked peas and carrots. For more information about using vegetables as treats for your dog, you can check out this blog post. It's by Doggy Dan. He's a professional dog trainer and behavioral specialist. I'll give you the link to his blog post called Dog Nutrition Incorporating Vegetables into Your Dog's Diet. It's just a lot cheaper and it's a lot better for your dog, especially for the whole life of your dog. If your dog's getting, you know, vegetables every day, it's good for their teeth, it's good for the digestion, it's good for their health, and it's a whole lot better for them and less expensive than buying treats in the store. So just try out a few things. Print the list of foods that are poisonous. Make sure you're not giving anything from that list. But uh, like, for example, I would buy frozen vegetables like frozen green beans, frozen peas and carrots. And I would just thaw them out just with running some hot water over them and just just give them a few. Um, the dachshund, I would break up broccoli and I would give her, you know, little pieces of it. The Boston Terrier, I would buy these little um, tomatoes and I would slice them up, put them on a plate. He thought they were the greatest. Um, also, some fruits they can have. Uh, my little dachshund loved blueberries and I would just keep a little dish of blueberries in the fridge. And instead of giving her a treat that I bought at the store, I would give her a blueberry. And the other thing, too, is they like it because if if it's coming out of the fridge <laughs> then they're even more excited about it right because they think you're getting they're getting your stuff so that's just a tip from you to me for your dog's health and for your um saving money give them vegetables instead of treats 
Okay, exercise. Your dog will need a daily exercise to burn calories, to burn their energy if they're young. You know what they say, a tired dog is a good dog for mental stimulation and to stay healthy. You should be walking your dog at least once a day. You should also be providing chew toys, especially if you have a puppy. You should consider providing interactive toys, which will help keep your dog busy, especially if your dog is left at home, like when you're at work, the interactive toys will help keep them active and out of trouble uh, while you're at work at work. Um, dogs who get enough exercise will have fewer behavioral issues and walking with your dog and playing with your dog every day is also good for your health and your happiness. So really make it a part of your day. How often do I play with my dog? When do I take the dog for a walk? It might be an evening ritual after supper. Maybe you get on the living room floor and you play with your dog and you, you throw a ball around or something, um, play a little tug of war toy, you know, make it a habit of every day. And it's not just for your dog's happiness, but it'll also contribute to your happiness. And if you're walking your dog, guess what? You're also walking you. <laughs> so it's going to be to your benefit. And it's also going to build a bond between you. And it's just, just going to give you both, um, you, you know, just tons of benefits, which is why we got a dog to begin with, right? Because they contribute to our lives so much. Obviously, make sure that your dog has a dog bed. You should be providing them their own bed. It should be in a quiet place where they can sleep without being disturbed, but not so that they're too isolated. Remember that dogs are pack animals. They prefer to be close to the family. Most dogs do not enjoy if their bed is so isolated that they feel totally alone. Make sure that you get a dog bed that is big enough for your dog. And you might, I'm sorry, I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit. You might, uh, you know, go ahead, if you have a small puppy, get them a bed that's appropriate for their size. And then when they get bigger, get them a bigger dog bed. But make sure that their bed is big enough for them to get in and walk around and lay down, okay? Um, make sure that you, uh, well, I'm going to give you, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention up here, the dog toys. I'm going to give you a link to Amazon for some dog chew toys and some dog interactive toys. I'm also going to give you a link for a whole assortment of dog beds, all different sizes, all different prices on Amazon. And you might also consider a crate if you have a puppy. I'll give you some links for those. Now, if you're going to put a puppy in a crate, you have to make sure that you know how to do that. Crate training is extremely important. So I'm going to give you a link to a step-by-step -step tutorial from professional dog trainer Doggy Dan on how to do crate training with a puppy. It is a thorough training step-by-step, -step, and it's free. So I'm giving you the link for that, okay? If you decide that you want to do crate training or if you would like your um, dog to have a crate or sleep in a crate. Next is grooming. Keep your dog clean by giving them a bath. About once a month is generally good for dogs. Again, you know, use your own judgment, you know, depending on what your dog does. If you have a young dog who's playing out in the yard with the kids all the time, they might get dirtier than, say, a little lap dog who just stays in your apartment with you. Also, their coat makes a difference if they have short coat, if they have long coat. Um, like, for example, if you have a short-haired dog, just brushing them regularly will, will keep them quite clean. Um, they do have to have baths, but not as often. So, you know, if your dog dogs getting smelly, if they're getting dirty, you know, just use your own judgment as to when the dog would need a bath. I do have an article that includes a video called How to Bathe Your Dog, Tips to Make It Easier for the Dog and for You. And I think you're going to find that uh, that video kind of fun. It just gives you some tips to just make it easier for yourself and, and make it easy for the dog and also to have it be a pleasant experience for both of you because it should be a pleasant experience, okay? Frequent brushing will help keep your dog's coat clean and it will also help to reduce shedding if your dog has longer fur. If you have a breed that needs professional haircuts, just ask the local dog groomer for a recommendation as to how often you should be bringing that dog. Now, whatever the cost of that is, you need to put that in your monthly budget, okay? You don't want the dog to be, you know, three months overdue on their haircut because you didn't set the money aside for the haircut. Now, when I was a kid, we had a poodle, and a poodles have to go for, you know, regular haircuts. And I remember the groomer saying that if you let the dog go too long, they grow tons of hair inside their ears. And uh, the groomer said it's quite painful for them to get ahead of that hair and get rid of it if it's been left too long. So it's going to be easier for your dog. It's going to be easier on the groomer if you take them regularly. And again, just ask your groomer. And if you don't know where to take your dog, ask some some, um, you know, local friends and family if, you know, where they take their dog for grooming. Get a recommendation, okay?
And you don't have to be happy with the first one that you get. And the same is with a vet. If you, you know, try out a vet and you just think the guy's a jerk or, you know, you were mad that you took your dog for the appointment and you had to wait an hour and a half. Or if you take a groomer and you just think they're too rough with your dog, whatever. You know, you, it's, you know, you're going to have this dog for the dog's whole life. And so you want to be with a vet that you're comfortable with and you want to be with a groomer who you're comfortable with. Okay, so feel free to go through one or two or three um, until you find one that that you resonate with, okay, that you feel is going to give the best care for your dog. Also, free, uh, flea and tick protection is important, not only for your dog, but also for your home. You don't want to get fleas in the house. They multiply by the billions. It, it's really a terrible problem. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to give you a link. It also has a video called How to Get Rid of Fleas and How to Prevent Getting Them in the First Place. I'm going to just give you a spoiler alert. Use a product like Advantage, okay? There's also a few more. can't remember the names of them offhand, but your vet will be able to give you a recommendation. Do not do flea baths. Do not bomb the house house with flea you know sprays don't use flea spray I am telling you I am 54 years old I have had pets since I was in fourth grade I have never ever 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 seen those products work to get rid of fleas okay you need to just give them a flea and tick medication such as advantage if you go to that video or that article that I'm giving you I'll give you the link to that you can get it on Amazon but um, also, I would suggest uh, asking your vet because your vet's going to be up to date on what's the most current, what's the best, um, you know, the best brand uh, for you and your dog. But Advantage is always a good um, a good one and, and they work. They get rid of the fleas and they keep them from coming back. Okay. And you do need to do that every flea season. Okay. Uh, and uh, identification and licensing. You should contact your, your local, you know, your town or village where you live and get the information for what do they require for dog licenses. You should also uh, put a tag on your dog's collar with their name and your phone number. You can get a tag at a place called PetTags.com. I'm going to give you the link. They're super inexpensive. Um, I've had them where they're a little milk bone shape. Um, and I want to say I paid like five or six bucks for it. Little milk bone shape and it's got the dog's name and then your cell phone number you know in case your dog gets lost you want to be, have some identification on your dog you also might consider i'm sorry might consider microchipping if you don't know what that is it's a little microchip that has all of your information and it's embedded under their skin apparently it's a very quick and painless and inexpensive process i personally have not done it yet um, so ask your veterinarian if you would like to do that, because if your dog gets lost, if they're turned in to a local dog shelter or an SPCA, if they're picked up by the dog catcher, um, the first thing those organizations will do is they'll check to see if the dog has a microchip, which will show up with your information. But just as easy, if your dog wears a harness or a collar, get him a little pet tag with their name and phone number on it, okay? Also, you're going to want licensing and identification if you ever have to travel with your dog, okay? Now, a list of supplies. I'm just giving you a basic list here. I'm linking everything to Amazon so that you can get what you need. Uh, your dog bed, a dog blanket, food and water bowls, a dog brush, toys. You might want to get some interactive toys, and you also might want to get some chew toys for uh, puppies. You can get them a collar, but I recommend a harness instead. Um... There's a lot of reasons. Um, you know, dogs will pull on the leash, and if they're pulling on the leash and they're wearing a collar, that can actually cause collapsed trachea of over the course of their life. And if that becomes an issue, that can be fatal. That's a serious thing. And if you've got them on a harness instead, they're not going to have that problem, okay? That's the main reason. Also, the harness is just more comfortable for the dog. And also, a harness gives you more control of the dog. If you're training your dog to walk on a leash, if you have a dog who will take off after a squirrel, if you have a dog who might fight with other dogs on the walk, that harness is going to give you a lot more control. I'm going to give you a link to get those on Amazon. The ones that I've used um, are Papilla. That's the brand. It doesn't matter. You can get any brand that you want, but mine were machine washable. You throw them in the washer, throw them in the dryer. I had a couple and I would just interchange. So I, I really recommend that you get a harness instead of a collar for your dog. 
and then get one of those little pet tags and put it on the harness. You're gonna to wanna to get a leash for your dog. You're also gonna to wanna to get either a pooper scooper or some dog poop bags. Um, I have personally found that when I take the dog out, I have the pooper scooper with me. It's just the easiest thing. I've always had like a little plastic trash can with a plastic bag inside on my porch or on the back porch, wherever I'm gonna go in and out with the dog. I take the pooper scooper with me. We take the dog for a walk. It's got poop in it. When I come back, I dump it in the garbage can. Once a week, I get rid of that garbage. That's what I've always done, but do whatever, um, you know, do whatever you want to do, but not just on the walks, but you're going to want to make sure that you clean up your yard, either with a pooper scooper or a poop bag every time they go out there or go out every Saturday, pay a neighbor kid to do it if you have to, but don't leave poop in the yard. It's disgusting. It's going to smell and you might end up watching my video, how to get your dog to stop eating poop. Okay, so you got to just get in the habit right from the beginning of cleaning that up, okay? You're going to want to get some dog nail clippers. Um, otherwise, you might just have your dog's cl uh, nails clipped only at the vet, but you might want to at least have a pair of nail clippers in case they broke a nail and you had to clip it off. I, it's my suggestion you should have some on hand. I do uh, have a video on how to clip your dog's nails too. If you want to, um, if you decide you want to do that yourself, please watch the video first. You're going to want to get some dog shampoo, and you are going to want to get a dog coat if you live in a climate where it gets cold. Um, now, this is very important. On this um, description box, I'm going to give you a link to my article called, um, I think it's called do dogs need coats in the winter? Please make sure that you go to that link that I'm giving you because most people think that, because oh, a dog has a fur coat. They don't need a coat. No, you're wrong. Most dogs do not have a thermal layer coat that will actually keep them warm in the winter. And in that video, in that article, I give you a printable list of the dogs that would need a coat in the winter and the dogs who would not. And you would be surprised. There are only a limited number of breeds that have, it's like a second layer. Every dog has the top layer of fur that we see and then underneath some breeds like a German uh, Shepherd or a Husky, they have a second level underneath that's it's kind of like a thermal layer of fur and that's what keeps them warm most dogs don't have that most breeds don't have that so if you're outside with your chihuahua or your poodle and you'd be surprised a boston terrier a boxer some of the dogs on the list that don't have that thermal coat it's just like you being outside without a coat on okay so please Take this advice from me. Go to the link I'm giving you, and it's going to tell you which breeds need a coat, which breeds don't need a coat. And then it's also going to tell you, okay, how cold is too cold? Like, when does the dog need a coat? Okay, and basically, just to give you a heads up until you have time to go and watch that video, 45 degrees or less, you need to start thinking about it. And as a general rule, if you have a coat on, you have to consider whether your dog needs a coat. Okay, so please... Just, I don't mean to stay on that forever, but I live near Buffalo. I live in western New York. It gets cold here. And I cannot believe how many times I see somebody out walking their little dog and it's literally 17 degrees out and that little dog does not have a coat on. I, I cannot stand it. Okay, so this is just kind of a pet peeve of mine. So please, find out whether your dog should have a coat educate yourself right now with my help on keeping your dog warm for the rest of his life if you live in a cold climate okay and also you're going to want to pick up a carrier if you have a small dog okay so there's your list of you know just basic things now here's something that i hope it can help you with when you're not at home it's like okay you got a new puppy or you got a dog whatever you go to work every day you know or you're going out for dinner or whatever like what do you do with the dog okay you know i don't want you to be one of those people that let, leaves their dog you know for 10 12 hours at a time and uh you know all this just don't be that way you know you gotta consider your dog's feelings consider their dog your dog's life and you know if you don't want to do it because you're nice do it to avoid avoid behavioral issues you know, if you're leaving your dog all the time and you're not making sure their needs are met while you're gone, you're going to have a dog with behavioral issues. You're going to have a dog who is urinating or pooping in the house. You're going to have a dog who is destructive. You're going to have a dog who's suffering from a separation anxiety. So, you know, it's just good all the way around for you to educate yourself on what you need to do when your dog is home alone. Okay, now don't worry. I'm going to give you some help on this here. 
You should always make sure that your dog is safe and safe and comfortable when you're at home. For example, leave the thermostat or the air conditioning. What would be comfortable for you? So many people, they go to work, they turn their furnace down to 50. You know what? Would you want to sit in a 50-degree house all day? They have animals. They're living, breathing mammals. They're dogs and their cats, okay? So don't, you know, don't turn the heat off when you go to work. And the same with air conditioning. You don't have to keep it optimal, you know, temperature for your dog, but you got to keep it comfortable for your dog when you're not home, okay? Make sure they have food, make sure they have water, um, and also consider, you know, what if you had a car accident on the way home or something, you know, make sure they have food and water, okay? Uh, make sure they have a dog bed, make sure they have some toys so they have something to occupy them while you're gone. If you work long hours or you need to be gone um, a long time, and I would say any more than about anywhere from six to eight hours, if you have to be gone, say, longer than eight hours, you might consider asking a trusted neighbor or a friend to come over and take your dog outside if you need to be gone for several hours or for example if you normally work nine to five and you're normally home by 5 30 but you have a meeting after work or you're going out for dinner straight from work you might want to have somebody who you can call who has a key to your house that could go let the dog out for you um do you know what i mean now um people who are retired who live in your neighborhood are great for that because they're happy they're happy to help and also Consider other dog owners in your neighborhood or even cat owners because you could be that for them as well. You know, it can just be a mutual beneficial relationship where if they need to be late, you'll go let their dog. And if you need to be late, they'll go let your dog go out. Okay, so you might want to just have that in place. And also you want to have that in place in case uh, something happens. Like I say, what if you get in a car accident? What if something happens? What if you get an emergency call? You have to have somebody who has a key to your house that can go in and take care of your dog. Okay, so make sure that you have that ahead of time. Trying to think of the name of the video I did fairly recently. I did a whole video about that, and I can't remember what the title was, but it was something about leaving your dog home alone. So you may want to check that out, too. It'll give you some more ideas about that. I am going to give you a link, again, to Doggy Dan's blog post, um, How to Find a Quality Dog Sitter or Walker That Your Pup Will Love. That's a really nice article. I also did a video about how to find a good dog sitter, so that'll give you some advice on um, that sort of thing, making sure that your dog's okay when you're not at home. Also, if your dog is having difficulty being home alone if you're like wow you know my dog gets really upset when he's home alone you might want to uh, watch this video treating dog separation anxiety tips to help your dog be home alone if your dog is you know really kind of upset when you're leaving they might be suffering from separation anxiety and there are things that you can do to help your dog with that and again if your dog's dealing with separation anxiety then you're going to have a dog who's got some behavioral issues as well plus it's just not good for them right you want your dog to be happy you want them to be happy you want them to be comfortable you don't want them to be afraid in their little doggy life right now here's where I got a ton more free stuff for you I want you to get help with dog training okay you think you know how to dog train maybe you don't okay for example if you think that the way to potty train a puppy is to rub his nose in it you couldn't be more wrong okay so I, I don't mean to be a jerk but don't listen to whatever your friends say, whatever your parents did when you were a kid. Please take the information that I'm giving you. A lot of this is going to be free and get good quality education about good, effective, kind, and gentle dog training techniques, okay? I recommend Doggy Dan. He's a professional dog trainer, behavioral specialist. He owns the dog uh, training website called the theonlinedogtrainer.com. I'm going to give you a link to that website. Uh, Doggy Dan is more more than 300 videos on that website where you get to watch Doggy Dan training dogs and puppies. So there's no better way to learn dog training than to watch a professional dog trainer to do it. I'll give you the prices right up front. He gives you three days in the site to try it out, watch as many videos as you want for $1. And then he has a $37 a month monthly membership. And then he has a six month membership for $147 or you can get a full year membership for $198. 
if you have a puppy, I suggest, um, first of all, watch all the free stuff that I'm giving you. I'm going to give you a bunch of free stuff right now. But you might consider getting the six-month membership because you're going to have six months with your puppy. you got a lot to teach your puppy. you got to do potty training. you got to do leash training. you got to teach your puppy not to bark all the time. you got to have your puppy not chewing on things. When you have a puppy, you just have a lot of things to teach. And I would hate to have you sign up for that monthly membership for $37 a month and then realize you've been in there for six months and you could have saved a lot of money if you just got the six months membership okay so i want to give you this information so that you have it they have uh doggy dan also has a very thorough and complete puppy training program called the puppy coach it's only 19 bucks that's it okay so i'm giving you the link to that as well that's all the paid stuff that you can pay for that you can have tons and tons and tons of training with doggy dan but here are some free things i'm going to give you these links in the description box one is called the easy way to an obedient dog that's a video series of five dog training videos from doggy dan Okay, the next one is Potty Training Made Easy. I love this video series. Doggy Dan is in a guy's house and he's showing him how to set up for potty training. He's, it really is step-by-step -step professional training on how to potty train your puppy. Go ahead and uh, click on that and get the free videos for that. He also has a training called The Ultimate Guide to Leash Training. He also has... Uh, um, a full tutorial on crate training. I'm going to give you the link to that. And then he also has just a nice blog post called How to Set Your New Puppy Up for Success. And I just think that that's really helpful. So again, I'm going to give you the link to all that stuff in the description box. So go ahead and take the time. And please just, please just believe me that if you think you know, you might not. Okay, and you know what? The smarter you are, the more educated you are, the more skills that you have as a dog owner and the more knowledge that you have as a dog owner, the easier it's going to be for me, or I'm sorry, for you, the easier it's going to be for your dog, the easier it's going to be for both of you to just have an enjoyable, problem-free life with each other. It's just so worth it, okay? Now, I do hope that this has helped. Again, if it has, please go ahead and give the video a like, and please go ahead and subscribe. Now, if you do uh, decide to subscribe, look at my YouTube channel. I have a dog training playlist. I have a, um, a puppy training playlist. I also have pet care, and I also have pet health. So you can hang around on my channel a little bit, see if there's, you know, if you have particular issues that you want to get some help with. Also, always feel free to comment below in the video, and if I, if you have a question, if I can help you with it, I most certainly will. Chances are, if you have a question, I probably already have a video that can help you, okay? Now, one more thing before we go. I know this video is running long, so I really appreciate you staying with me all this time. I donate to animal charities. I do peoplelovinganimals.com as my job, and I donate 10 percent of all of the commissions that I earn on the website and also on this YouTube channel to animal charities and if you go to the home page of my website peoplelovinganimals.com you will see a list of the animal charities that I donate to so I hope so much that t today's video has helped you. I'd love it if you would comment. Let me know, did you just adopt an adult dog? Did you get, just get a puppy? What kind of breed do you have? Are you a new puppy owner? Do you have any specific questions? I really would love to hear from you, and I would love to be able to offer support and help for you if I can, okay? So again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Deborah, and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com. Thanks again. Bye-bye.